Hey everybody and welcome back. This is quite an emotional time. It's the last Kubernetes video we're doing in the mini series, but it's far from the last video I'll be doing on Kubernetes as I've already got a ton of things that I want to look at. Currently we're using things like K3S, but I wanna move on to RKE2, more on that later. But anyway, the focus of this video is to get up GitOps. Now, there's plenty of options regarding GitOps. There's things like Argo CD, for example, or Flux. But we're going to be using Fleet because it's built into the Rancher and we already have that up and running. So by the end of this video, you'll be deploying your code, i.e. your manifest files, into Fleet and then that will be pulling it and dynamically deploying it onto your cluster. So that means you only need to make changes to your GitHub repository or whichever repository you're using, and it'll automatically be reflected within your cluster. So how do we do this? Well, we're gonna create a new repository in GitHub. We're gonna generate some keys, some authentication keys, and then we're gonna plug that into Fleet within Rancher. So let's jump into it and let's get started. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with GitHub, but obviously you can use it with anything that's capable of hosting repository. So on my GitHub, I'm gonna click on my repositories and then I'm gonna create a new one. And I'm just gonna call this one fleet test for this video and I'll make it public, but I recommend you make it private just in case you're putting anything there that you don't want to be made publicly available. Then I'm just gonna create that repository. That should go off and create it and yeah, we have all of the details for this repository and how to commit to it. So make a note of the URL here. We're gonna be using this in a minute, but what you need to do next is to go into your profile in the top right hand corner. You need to go down to settings. Then at the bottom, you want to click developer settings. And then you want to create a personal access token. So a fine grain token. And then you want to generate a new token. So I've already done this for testing, but I'm gonna delete this one and then I'm gonna create a new one. I'll give it the same name, so fleet test. Do note that there's an expiration here and you can change this to whatever you want. And once that's done, you can change the permissions to suit your needs. I'm just gonna click generate a token. Now, when this is generated, you need to copy this because you cannot get this again. So I'm gonna copy this, we've got the little tick, and now we're gonna head into Rancher. So here I am in my Rancher dashboard. Let me zoom in a moment. And we wanna hit the ship on the left for continuous delivery because that's what GitOps is, continuous delivery. It's continually trying to deliver your code to its cluster. So click on here. And then the important bit is in the top right hand corner, make sure you change it to fleet local, which is your current cluster, not the fleet default. So now that's on local, let's say get started. And I'm just gonna call this one fleet test again. Obviously change this to something that you think is useful. And then we want the repository URL, but remember we've got the secret copied. So let's do that first. So I'm gonna change this to create basic HTTP auth access. My username, this is my email address for my account, so my GitHub. And then the password. So I'm gonna paste that in here. I'm gonna add my email into the username bit. And then I'm gonna add the repository URL, which you can get from back in GitHub. So we can now go back in here to get my repository. So if I click repositories, I can now click fleet test. And then here, click on HTTPS, make sure it's there. And we can copy this. And then when we go back to Rancher, we can paste that now into here. So we've got the repository URL. Now the branch name as well, you need to make sure that you get this right. It defaults to master but typically I use main. So I'm gonna change this to main. I'm now gonna add my email address in here, and then in the bottom corner, I'm gonna click next to go to the next bit. So now I've clicked next, there's a ton of other additional variables we can put in. I'm gonna leave everything as default for now, but do go and read the documentation. There might be things like certain labels, certain user accounts you want to use this. I'm just showing you the basic functionality to get this working. So I'm gonna leave this all as blank and I'm gonna click create. Now, when you've clicked create, you should be presented with this screen here. Now that looks bad, it's not working, but actually look what's happening here. It's going to my GitHub in that fleet test. It's on the main branch and it says updating, but the remote repository is empty. Well, that's right, there's nothing in that repository. So let's quickly remediate that. So I'm gonna go back to my GitHub. Now, 
I know there's going to be people screaming at me saying, why are you committing through the GUI? That's absolutely fine. Yes, you could upload this through things like Code Server or VS Code or from the command line, but I'm just keeping this really simple for you guys. So here we want to upload some existing files. So I'm going to click this here. I'm going to choose the files I want. And as you can see here, I've already got a Gotify manifest file set ready. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to click Open. That's going to upload them. And then I'm going to commit these changes. Now I'm going to commit these and then quickly go back to the Rancher tab so you can see what happens. So commit changes, processing the files. That's happened. You can see them. If we go back to Rancher now, hopefully this should update in real time without me clicking anything. So we can see, oh, yep, there we go, active. Waiters are being applied. Not ready. So let's click into the cluster. We can see my local cluster. Now if I click on here, we should see what's happening, especially if you click on the conditions. Now it's saying deployment apps, Gotify is progressing, and it says the deployment does not have the minimum availability. So there could be a few reasons as to why this is happening. Now, technically, you could create everything you need to in here. So things like the persistent volume claims, the namespaces, and all of that. And handily, I've done that for my Gotify, and I'll put this up on my GitHub for you guys to copy and paste. But everything now looks like it's working, so it says it's active. So what does that mean? Well, let's head back into our home. And now we're in the home, let's check things out. Well, straight away, we can see that it's been pulling some images for Gotify which looks good. So let's check projects and namespace. We got Gotify, yep, it created that namespace. Let's go to the workloads, check the deployments. That's fine. And if we look at the services, we can see that Gotify is here as well. So that all looks good. And so hopefully if we click on here, we can visit Gotify. Yeah, it's up and working, brilliant. And we could also access it through a DNS record if we want to use our traffic reverse proxy just by adding that ingress route as well, which we did in the previous video. And also if we click on Longhorn, let's see what's happening in here. We should have a volume for Gotify, which we can do here. And this is the reason why in the last video I said to create this manually because otherwise it comes up with a dodgy name like this one. But it still works and you can relate it back to the namespace here. And if we want to check that, we can go to more resources, scroll down to traffic, and then we can click our ingress routes. And you'll see here that we've got Gotify set up. So fingers crossed, I can go to gotify.jimsgarage.co.uk and I should reach this login page. And here we go. We can see this up and running and all of that was deployed through Fleet using GitOps. Excellent. So now you have GitOps running with Fleet and you saw just how simple and how powerful this tool is. It means that you don't have to run any of those cube control commands anymore, albeit you'll still want to know those for debugging, etc. But you can now run and submit everything through Git requests. And also you could have changed that during that process to make sure that any edits you make to GitHub are reflected within your cluster, i.e. you don't make changes on the cluster. It always just takes what's in the config, i.e. the manifest file on your GitOps, and uses that instead of what you deploy manually on Rancher. So that concludes our mini series on Kubernetes. We've gone from deploying a highly available cluster with a load balancer through to installing Rancher, our first applications, things like traffic and PyHole, and now you have GitOps running, so you can just deploy everything through your GitHub. As I said, I will be coming back to Kubernetes in the future. We'll be looking at things like RKE2, which is another competing distribution of Kubernetes from SUSE. But for now, we're just gonna leave it here. And if you do have any questions, do jump on Discord. And as always, thanks for watching this. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.